Welcome back to HodgePodge. Today I am back again with Actor Observer all the way out from Boston. We're in Syracuse, guys. Thank you so much for once again coming on the show. Uh, it's, it's so great to have you back. You just recently released an album. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? What is the name of the album? Yeah, the album is called Pareidolia. And uh, we recorded <coughs> it um, in February of 2017 this year um, with Kevin Gate. Kevin Gates. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. With yeah. Ke- <laughs> Yo, yeah. Kevin Gates the rapper. <laughs> With Kevin Die from the band Gates. Kevin Die from the band really like Gates. That. Yeah. He's going to be really happy. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the name we gave him during the recording. Yeah, process. it's hard not to call him Kevin Gates the rapper. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, it was uh, probably one of the, the best recording experience we've ever had, and uh, we're really excited to show it to people. And actually, for the people who are watching, we're currently recording this April 1st, 2017, because today you actually received the last song of that album fully recorded, fully mixed. Yeah, so uh, Kevin's been a freaking trooper with, uh, you know, really treating this album with his time and respect, and he's really engaged with the process. So he's been sending us a few songs at a time as he's been mixing them and honing down the sound, and then uh, tonight during our show he texted us that he sent us the last one that we hadn't heard yet and um so we just listened to it and we're uh, really overwhelmed with how awesome it sounds and how happy we are not only with what we created but with our choice to work with him because he's been incredible and did a great job it sounds phenomenal i was just giving a sneak peek and oh my god you're gonna love it uh you gotta go check it out I wanted to ask you a few questions that we didn't get to in the first interview, and one of those questions is, have you ever had like a nightmare gig? Uh, not, so there are... <laughs> <laughs> no, clearly by our response, uh, never. So there are... gonna have to elaborate a little bit. So there are, uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go in shifts. Uh, so uh, the first experience we had was uh, less of a nightmare gig and more of a nightmare scenario. Um, this was on the heels of our fir- very first tour, and we had just done an overnight drive from Pennsylvania back to Massachusetts where we were playing the last date of our tour. I don't know which one he's going to talk about. Oh yeah, God. this is, right, this is how this happens. I don't like not knowing which <laughs> which one you're going to dig up from my it's memory. Not a show. I've it's repressed just a all of I, this. I, I, right, so what I said, well, so what happened was uh, we parked and we were waiting for our friend who was uh, letting us stay there, and uh, we were touring in just a van with no trailer at the time because this is several years ago, um, and I went outside of the van to take a nap on the grass. Oh, and, yeah. Right? This is in Worcester. Right? So mm-hmm. I do this thing where I'm just napping on a sleeping bag at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. And it's just, like, oh, very wholesome, and it's very chilly, but, like, I'm really comfortable. And then our friend shows up, and we're, like, moving the van 15 feet to where it will be parked for the remainder of the day. And then just, like, the blues could show up. And it's just, like, sirens, two cars. And then... <laughs> The, we're like, oh, cool. And then they're like, we got a call that uh, somebody was sleeping in the yard today. And I uh, then uh, our drummer, Dan Bob, over here was uh, asleep on the floor between uh, one of the benches. And the cop asked if he was alive. And then. No, the, the cop didn't ask if he was alive. The cop was like <laughs> looking into our window. Is he and, dead? <laughs> and the cop literally like looks into our window and he goes, Is that guy dead? <laughs> and then. And then like, he, I don't know if he was being really funny or if he genuinely was like, Yo, is that a corpse? Because, like, this is about to get real interesting. And then what's really funny is that he, Dan Bob responds, I'm alive. Like, he couldn't be more bothered that somebody was talking to him, let alone an officer of the goddamn law. And um, um, that basically, I had spent most of that because it was our first tour, just being hyper anxious about a lot of different scenarios. So I was like, oh, cool. Every fear I've ever had is super validated right now. By the way, uh, two things. One, uh, the reason the cops were called is because there apparently was a break-in somewhere in that a- neighborhood, and somebody had called the cops and said they saw someone with tattoos <laughs> sleeping on their lawn. <laughs> which, which I uh, there's yeah which means like bad person. Yeah, I mean tattoos equal bad person. Clearly. I do have tattoos, Andy. I'm a bad person. So. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean you have tattoos, therefore so right. are a bad yeah, person. You're right. You're not wrong. Uh, the second thing is uh, that had nothing to do with a nightmare gig. That was just a nightmare situation yeah. while touring. While on tour. Uh, uh, so oddly enough, oh, our oh, worst oh. gig was in Worcester. <laughs> True. Oh, and so, we've all repressed it, so we won't talk about it. Wait, what was our worst gig? In Worcester? Just look at the camera. Wait, I don't even know. It what didn't it was. happen. 
Next. (laughs) (laughs) Would you say you've ever had, like, uh, an excellent gig that just, like, was phenomenal? Uh No, all of them are bad. (laughs) (laughs) Was was there any gig that, like, sticks out in particular, or is it maybe, like, different for everyone in the band? Can I talk about tonight for a second? Of course you can talk about tonight. Uh, So today, um, uh, so basically we played a show... um, our friend Nick Berger's uh, fifth annual birthday show, and uh, we're from Boston, and we're kind of far from home. We just came out to play this show, and uh, we had a bunch of people come up to us and say a lot of really nice things about how they found a lot of emotional connection to our set, and that was extremely validating and a really important thing for for me as a musician because I feel most comfortable playing music, and to find that that helps somebody is really cool. Yeah, tonight's definitely up there. Do you guys all, like, have different... Uh, I'd be curious to know what everyone... If you guys have one off the top of your head, like, that that gig was the one for you. Because we might all have different ones. Like, oh. What's one that you can think of? Yeah, that's... Uh, would you agree? Yeah. Okay. There's at least one two of us. Um, before this, uh, there was a show with Therefore I Am. Uh, it was a show uh, with a band that absolutely influenced us. Uh, it is a band who's... Uh, you know, within the family, it is the guitarist is uh, Greg here's uh, oldest brother, uh, but a band that no matter that, even without the family like relation, all of us have connected to. Without even that connection, um, I hadn't met Greg until 2010. But for the five years before that, I had been seeing Therefore I Am uh, from Connecticut, and connecting with them on MySpace with like my high school screamo band. Like, it was a band I was very into and wanted to connect with and never did when they were active and then when they were together and I was in this band um, we got the chance to play a sold out show at the best venue in Boston of I would say the Sinclair the only venue shout out to the Sinclair collective opinion the Sinclair the The best staff the best venue the best sound the best treatment and not just us saying that it's other bands that have come from afar always say that they look forward to playing it um so to be able to do that with a band that was so influential at a place that was so wonderful, it was just a overwhelming uh, smorgasbord of seeing, smorgasbord. yeah, seeing seeing the best people Yo. having the best experience with the best band that had influenced us. Like it was overwhelming. What you got, Ryan? Yeah. Nah, nah I got nothing. That was, what, that was good. Was, which one? Just pick one. I don't know, man. Yo, Ryan, he loves all of them. Ryan has amnesia. He doesn't remember any of them. I don't remember any shows. Did you say connect so many times in that last response? One, because you're from Connecticut. (laughs) Yo, that's or or two, because of Therefore I Am's demo, you are connected. Or three, because you're a Connecticut. That's the same. It's not. Move on. (laughs) This. This is the reason. This is the reason why we're <laughs> we're continuing this interview because like, we don't uh, stop oh talking. They're, they're great the people. Plane. I mean, they're great guys. Fun to hang out with. What is it like touring with a bunch of guys like stuff in a van? It's um. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Hot and sweaty. Have you ever had like a weird interaction with a fan? Um. Yeah, like all the time. But that's what makes them so great. Um. I don't know, like weird it you know socializing with new people can be weird but we're pretty comfortable in, because we live in weird um i think what's been most bizarre is um and this isn't weird in a bad way it's just kind of like a crazy thing we're not a, a huge band like we've been around for a while but like you know we're still making a name for ourselves and um at this point but i mean maybe by the time this comes out there's more that'd be weird weirder but uh at this point there are two people uh, that we've met that are fans of our band that actually have our logo tattooed on their body. No way. Like, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Like the man. triangle yeah. line circle. That's our, our logo. And um, one of our very close friends, who's also a huge fan of our band, got it tattooed on part of her sleeve a few years ago when we were even smaller. And then recently another uh, fan tattooed herself with our logo on her wrist. And... Um, that's just kind of a wild thing to comprehend because that's on them forever. And we love tattoos and we have multiple band related tattoos. So we get it, but we just don't think of ourselves as being like a band of that impact. So to know that there are people who are like, doesn't matter what you think. I 
care this much about what you've done for me and that I want to carry with me forever. That's like incredibly humbling. That's that's quite the honor, honestly. Yeah, like I wouldn't even wild. call that a weird fan interaction. That's just like like the fan interaction. Yeah, like, it's, I, it's um, just like I don't know how I don't know how to repay that person. Yeah. <laughs> they like, they yeah. sacrificed a part of their body for something that we created, and who knows how long we'll be around or creating it. The weird doesn't describe a general, like, this is, like, a very weird thing. It's more like our reaction to it is that you – it's weird that you don't know what to say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I wouldn't know either if someone tattooed hodgepodge. Like, you'd be like, no, no, you didn't. I'm doing that. (laughs) What do you do? Tattoo hodgepodge. You know what? Exactly. We're going to create a lot of empathy right now. We're all – like gonna leave this bro tats uh, before we, we leave <laughs> by the time this is out we will probably have them hodgepodge <laughs> get tatted <laughs> <laughs> what's like a best interaction with a fan you've had um i have a so it's less of a specific one and more of a, a, a general type of interaction um that we it, it it never gets old because it's never not a kind of a jarring experience but when someone says that watching us play is something that they were able to connect to on an emotional level because music was the first thing that ever allowed me to connect with other people in a way that I couldn't describe and it's been such a formative and important force for me in my life and when someone says that something I made with some some guys I like is like really important to them in that regard um, it's you know, incredibly humbling, but also, you know, validating in that maybe, maybe, uh, maybe we're all in this together, and that's a really cool feeling. I have one that's just, just to be very straightforward, uh, best fan interaction was the first time I saw, um, my brother up front singing along when I put the microphone out to the audience, singing along to the lyrics of our song, not because, not just because he's my brother or just because like he thought it would be nice to get involved, but because he genuinely told me he connected with our music and he wanted to sing along because I grew up singing along to his songs from the audience. So to be looking out to a crowd of people and hold the mic out and to see him shouting along with just as much passion as all our other friends and fans uh, was a really big bonding experience for me. As a that's, younger brother, you know? that's so awesome, man. That's a that's a great story. Is there anything like collectively you want to say to your fans with this new album coming out? Yeah, Ryan, tell us. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, Ryan's yeah. a very talkative guy. I, uh, drink, I am. Drink beer, get lit. <laughs> um, <laughs> re- re- recording Paradolio was a uh, for reasons we're not going to get into. Like apart from being one of the most rewarding experiences of our life was. Uh, was was very turbulent and we poured so much of ourselves into it and kevin from gates who recorded it really made us feel like creative people and drew from us things we didn't have in ourselves and i hope you're able to derive from it something that you know is important to you because it's the best thing we've ever done for us right now if you're watching this video, their new album, Paridulia, is out now. Go grab it. All of the links will be in the video description below. As always, if you like them, please go check it out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Check out my other videos and subscribe.